What's going on, Coin Traders? Thanks for joining me for the show, looking at ICP Internet Computer. Been a couple weeks since we looked at it, so a few things that I did want to talk about with Internet Computer ICP on that ticker. So if you're a big fan of the Internet Computer ICP and you enjoy this type of content, would appreciate hitting the thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you have not done so just yet. And so one of the first things that I actually want to look at was one of the announcements that came out a couple days ago that I feel like got missed and looked over by a lot of the crypto community, specifically the ICP community here. And essentially the announcement is talking about Definity Foundation and their announcement that there's been a partnership with the Swiss city of Lugano. And essentially they have announced a partnership that will be adding BTCs or in this case CKBTC, which if you're not actually familiar with that is the Chanky Bitcoin which is essentially the bridge right now that is active and live on internet computer, which does have a one-to-one -one partnership. So essentially it is kind of like a lockup. And one of the things that's actually kind of interesting is that the author talks off about internet computer being one of the best and most underrated players in the blockchain industry. Now, obviously that's just an opinion from the author, but needless to say, there's a lot of sentiment that has this same type of narrative. And a lot of people do still feel this way about internet computer, which is one of the great reasons why it's actually been creating a lot of buzz and excitement amongst the supportive community, specifically about future use cases. So even in this case, they talk about it providing a holistic product that developers use to build applications with real world usage and being able to build D apps in industries like communication, social media, decentralized finance, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the great takeaways from this partnership is that we have the, my, my, excuse me, my Lugano application. That's actually going to help residents pay for services in crypto. So when we talk about real world integration and adoption and usage, this is exactly the kind of thing like we see. And when we see great products and chains like Internet Computer with this type of announcement, although it might not necessarily seem that significant or substantial, this is one of the types of announcements and actually integration and adoption features that we do typically look at, especially when we talk about long term views for a specific crypto or blockchain. And it's always been a huge thing because there hasn't been a lot of real world services that do accept crypto. So the fact that now users will now be able to pay for services and taxes, even using internet computers, CKBTC, this type of announcement always does do pretty well, especially in a bull market to generate a lot of hype. And unfortunately, since we are still getting extremely pounded in on the tail end of a bear market, this announcement's kind of fallen on deaf ears and it hasn't really got a lot of the hype, but hopefully things like this and especially usage and integration can start to get a little bit more exposure for a lot of that real world usage and adoption. Now, so like a lot of the other crypto market, we actually saw Internet Computer take quite a beating recently over the last few days after a little bit of a nice upside, and it turned out to be a little bit of a bear flag here. So we are going to be talking about the price action, and specifically on that, I did make a tweet about a short-term trade that I did get into earlier today with an entry at 310, an ultimate target of 331, and a very nice tight stop loss at 308. So if we actually switch over to the shorter term chart, and I will be talking about this trade here in a little bit, but as you can see a pretty nice bounce here that did play out. And then ultimately the trade did go south as a lot of the other cryptos like they have been doing to true, to true to form have actually flushed. So did end up getting flushed past the stop loss here on this bounce, but ultimately did have a support hold up. So now does come the third part or actually the fourth part rather of a trade and that's actually going through and analyzing the trade as well as analyzing the current setup and not trying to over trade but also understanding what the potential next setup and things to look out for next would be so specifically in that case one of the things that we are looking at is that after a very nice long lower shadow and i'll <laughs> albeit this is extremely bearish candle but typically on these huge flushes, we do see a big long lower shadow. But in that instance, we did see a taper off and actually a hold of a lot of the support long lower shadows on these candles forming a higher low on top of the bottom. So that's one of the things that typically we do look out for. And since we do have a lot of correlation and a tie to the rest of the crypto space, this unfortunately does get manipulated by a lot of the other cryptos that do play out specifically Bitcoin. But so right now, especially with the way this played out, rejecting from this 12 period exponential moving average just above it on this one hour chart anyway, pulling back now actually forming a little bit of inside bars, still rejecting from the 12. So definitely not eager to make any new sort of short term trades just yet, accepting that short little loss on that trade and then actually looking whether or not we will be able to defend long term anyway, this 3073 closing level of support that would have to close and then ultimately we would have to see 312 break. Whether or not that happens, not expecting that to happen anytime soon. So that's another reason why I'm not necessarily super eager to jump into any new short term trades because we do have these key levels on the short term charts to look out for, which is why in short term trades, we look at short term charts. 
And so specifically with a little bit more bearish pressure blowing through this, we're going to be looking at the next level coming in at 306, then down to our all-time low right now coming in, at least on Coinbase anyway, at 3038. Now, personally, I'm still expecting a little bit of a tightening pattern to play out, and I would expect for at least the next day or so for us to see a tightening range, especially with a little bit of minimal volume. Because as we can see on this one-hour chart, especially this most recent flush had a pretty big and significant flush for the bearish volume. The next one below that actually didn't even see the biggest size magnitude for a bearish candle or also the lowest low for that move. But big thing to look out for on a bullish side is just decreasing bullish volume overall. So still not a great sign at all thinking that a reversal is coming, which is another reason why we're not going to be jumping into any new short-term trades. But because the size and magnitude of this most recent volume bar for this candle actually didn't really see that big of magnitude in order of downside and especially pushing down and seeing a new lower low, we actually saw a decent amount of dip buying here, which is why we see this long lower shadow. But to get that type of price action on a big candle is one of the indications that I think why we're actually going to start to see prices starting to stabilize and actually forming a little bit of a tightening range. Because if we actually do want to draw a downtrend resistance line on this one hour, Still holding that, but also still holding a pretty nice level from this low at 303, where we're actually looking at a pretty nice trend line, which could still actually get played out a little bit. But obviously, even in any type of consolidation or even descending triangle formation, we're still looking at a little bit more of a bearish impact. So example, if we do look at this as a line of support and then also a downtrend resistance line for in those lows, we would be looking at still having downside pressure on this big support zone. And then ultimately, favoritism does say we are going to be a lot more likely to see the next break down lower, which would mean putting prices down at a target of about 303 or down to the $3 psychological level. What we see right now, though, for example, if we look on shorter term on this hourly chart, is extremely big oversold RSI relative strength index and now starting to see those higher lows. But if we do break to the downside, we will actually see this breakdown again. So we are getting a little bit more of that divergence when we look at this chart and actually see a little bit more downside pressure but also getting higher lows on that hourly RSI. So now I do actually want to flip over to the 12 hour because as we're talking about higher lows in RSI and a little bit of that divergence, want to actually point this out. So back on 17th of August, we actually saw this RSI relative strength index get really low when we actually saw ICP get down to a low of about 318.3. And that's what saw a little bit of divergence on the closes, but especially now that we saw a new price low, we're actually starting to see higher lows as well. So even on the major retracements and dips below the 30 line, we're still seeing a lot more of that long-term bearish or actually bullish divergence. Signaling that although we are seeing a new lower low, we're actually seeing a weakening downtrend continue, which does mean a reversal. And of course, obviously that's not gonna be any type of guarantee and whether or not it does or when it will happen. Because even still, we could still see lower lows and actually a third data point that forms a higher low, for example, on RSI. So that's one of the reasons why we can never get too comfortable and confident only looking at technical indicators, but we do have to factor into other things. And one of the things that I actually do want to talk about is that earlier on Twitter as well, I did make a tweet talking about how the last four to five months, we've actually seen a decrease so far in overall selling pressure across internet computer ICP. But only seven of the 29 months that ICP has actually been around are have actually been any type of bullish month, and they aren't even that significant on the overall chart here, as you can see. And so the reason that this is significant is because we've had all this downside pressure with high selling volume. The fact that now we're actually seeing this minimal, and let's actually go ahead and flip over to the actual ICP chart and talk about this volume as well. Because just over the last four to five months, seeing this much price action with this you volume. So for example, even at the most recent low point, which came in September and October of last year, we were looking at 14.3 million and also 14.94 million being the bearish trading volumes that we saw and down to maybe in the peak on the most recent months, 14.87, and then down to 10.68. And then the next bearish volume was 8.72. Obviously current candle, we're only about a third of the way into the month and we're looking at about 2.9. So if we do factor, that's the average for about a third, we'd be looking at about 9 million. So still less than the 10 to, or the rest lower than the 14 that we were looking at previously. So we know that in downside moves, you have to have continuous volume. So this type of fading volume does mean that this downside move is going to be fading, which is another reason on why the RSI and some of the other charts are actually showing a little bit of that bullish divergence. So although this isn't a guarantee that we wouldn't actually see any type of new lower low come in, it does start to allude to the fact that the bear market is slowing down 
and that we are on the tail end and whether or not we do still have a little bit more time left to go on it, we still might, but we know that the strength of the downside moves not that strong, which does mean that when we actually do find support, gaining any type of bullish upside is actually going to be pretty easily because we know that any downside pressure and move isn't going to have the strength to actually continue. And it actually would have been interesting to see what happens last September and October or after that, because we know that in November, this is the monthly candle where we got the FTX announcement of it shutting down. And that's what happened to a lot of crypto that crashed is because a lot of sell volume did come in. So it would have been interesting to see that after these two months of extremely minimal volume, what that actually would have done for the overall price, since it did look like we were holding a little bit longer term support on top of the $5 psychological level. So just kind of to reiterate, an overall decrease over the last several months for selling pressure for this ICP chart doesn't necessarily mean that a bottom is in just yet or any time in the short-term future. But we do know that on financial market charts, a decrease in sell pressure across a long period of time always is going to signal a decrease in continued selling pressure, which does mean establishing a bottom and longer-term support is very soon. All right, so moving on into the daily chart here and just want to talk about some of the current levels that we are looking at. Like we mentioned, we're already going to be looking at 303 as being the downside support level with the $3 psychological below that. So plenty of a buffer to the downside. Would be surprised actually if we see that hit or break without anything substantially major. But I think that right now we saw enough of a downside day that ultimately we do need to see crypto start to settle, especially because if we go ahead and take a peek over at Bitcoin, the candle that just closed was actually not that much of a sell-off at all. So more or less, Bitcoin's just been in sideways consolidation for about the last three and a half weeks. So I think that with regard to the rest of the crypto space, very likely to think that right now the $3 psychological will end up holding up for a while anyway. Unless, like we said, some type of black swan event, news-driven catalyst or whatnot actually pushes prices down. But especially after having a very nice bear flag pull back, kick off support at 320 once again. This was actually a very huge level that I think would have actually ended up holding a lot better if we didn't get a complete sell-off on the rest of the altcoin market here. Especially after kicking off the 12 period, which immediately followed kicking off this 26. And typically we see that no matter what, if it's an upside or a downside move for bearish as well, especially when price is below the exponential moving average and price action and path of least resistance is to the downside, which is why we saw a very nice kick off the 26 and then pulling back, kicking off support and then pulling back and kicking off the 12 period exponential moving average. So since we've already checked both of those, it's actually a little bit more probable to find establishment of support and then actually test those levels once again. But in that instance, especially since we did look at 320 being such a very strong level of support, it is going to take a little bit more work to get back over that price hump and actually reestablish that as a very nice support. But it does seem logical to think that it would be happening soon, especially on any type of upside movement. Because from current price points, we're only looking at less than a 5% gain to be able to break back into the 320 level. But upside on top of that pretty much would be looking at about 340 which obviously was that confirmed level of resistance as well as confirmed level of support. And then even looking farther left, big point of rejection as well for support. In addition, like we said, also a very strong relevant downtrend resistance line. So that could potentially see prices getting stuck up once again, if we do see a rally getting stuck up right at that 320 level, which would also align on a downtrend with these exponential moving averages. The intersection point for that is gonna be in about five days on the 15th of September. So I think if it does take prices that long to actually get back up to 320, then that's pretty much going to be confirmation and another bad sign for the bears that likely 320 will hold up as resistance. And then we will see another pullback to test the 303 and $3 psychological level. Otherwise, if we do see a strong retracement and correction here in the next couple of days, I think it could be a very nice shot to actually reclaim that 320 and actually break this downtrend resistance line, which would help to solidify and confirm the 303 level as a longer term bottom especially for the time being anyway. If that happens, then ideally pulling back, kicking off 320 once again before making a run breaking 340. If 340 can also break, that would be the next good sign to actually start to see a little bit more bullish upside since we would be breaking through several key resistance points and also forming new higher highs. So that is our bullish setup that we're actually gonna have to see. But like we said, the longer it does take the bulls to actually reclaim the 320, the likelihood of a bearish continuation does start to increase. 
So we will have a lot more trades to be talking about over on Twitter. So make sure you go ahead and drop me a follow over there at coin underscore trades is the handle. I am going to be stepping out here for a work travel trip. So we'll be posting a lot more frequently over on Twitter and talking about current setups and current potential trade opportunities. But otherwise, yeah, I would love to know everyone's thoughts and predictions down in the comments sections or over on Twitter. Do love chatting it up with you guys both in the comments sections and over on Twitter or X. As always, if you did enjoy the show and this type of content, please hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you have not done so just yet. Do appreciate all the continued love and support. It does mean so much. Stay safe, take care, everyone, and I'll catch you back in the next video.